Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Millie's Base Side Chats, where we are live streaming to bring some calm to the chaos of your PCS and a lot of other factors of your military life, because we get it, we know, <laughs> it can be challenging. So here we are again for this week's installment. Uh, we are super excited to be bringing on a dear friend of the show and of Millie, and then also um, just an inspiring person that you probably read about and heard of and been following all along. So more about that in a second. We want to take a quick minute and just recognize our sponsor for the Bayside Chat Series this quarter. It is Boldly. They are our friends that are overdoing some phenomenal stuff in the world of subscription premium staffing. We will talk all about more or all about that more in a little bit. I'll tell you exactly what that means and what they're doing. But the key thing that I want you guys to hear is that they recognize the amazing talent that military spouses have um, and bring to the world workforce and they are employing you guys um, and seeking you out. So um, again, as W2 employees, things like pay time off, remote work. I mean, I'm telling you, it's pretty amazing. So huge thanks to Boldly. Um, and you can find more about them at boldly.com. Okay. So today though, we're going to be talking, we're going to hit like a lot. So y'all just buckle in, refill your coffees. Um, we're going to probably talk about, we're definitely going to talk about care packages because yours truly has a deployed service member right now. And I am the all time worst at care packages. So I'm going to get some tips on that. We're going to talk entrepreneurship. We're going to talk transitioning out. We're going to talk national guard bases, you name it. We're going to hit all of it. So today our very special guest is Joanna Golden, uh, from the wildly popular blog, Joe, my gosh, she's also an entrepreneur, she's a content creator. Um, she also is doing social media for military.com. So, I mean, you know, just a couple of hats this woman is wearing. Uh, she also runs a coffee shop that her and her husband have started out in Pennsylvania. And I am so thrilled to welcome my sweet friend, Joanna. Hi, Joanna. Hey, Kelly, how are you doing? <laughs> Thanks for joining me today and for your patience. <laughs> oh, <Lord>. Okay, <laughs> so Joanna, tell us a little bit about yourself. What did I miss in your bio? Um, and yeah, what do you have going on up there in Pennsylvania? Sure. So, um, so a caveat, I don't actually run the coffee shop. That is John's job. That's, so awesome. that's very clear. <laughs> Um, I do our social media for the coffee shop, but I am not slinging coffees and I'm not the brilliance behind everything that goes on. So that is all John. You don't do the sweet little hearts and the cappuccinos. That feels like it should be your thing. No, mm. not my thing. No, I'm actually really terrible behind the counter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll work on it. <laughs> Um, okay, so yeah, so tell me a little bit about your blog. If anyone hasn't heard of Joe, my gosh, let's talk. Let's start there. Like, what are some of the topics um, that you cover, and maybe like where did it start? Like, how did you decide to start that? Sure. So um, I started Joe, my gosh, in 2012, August of 2012, which is hard to believe. Mm. Um, and I basically started it because I was a new fiance to a Navy sailor who was going, um, who was in Afghanistan for a year. Um, that is John. He's now my husband. Um, <laughs> I'm not a different person. Um, and I had no concept of what military life was like. I didn't really know anybody um, who dealt with deployment or military or anything like that. Um, so I threw my energy into making care packages and I would take pictures of them and put them on Facebook. And one of my friends was like, you should put this in a blog. And I was like, nobody wants to read that. Like, it's just these dumb pictures, um, of like really stupidly intricate packages that I was making. And I mean, I spent hours on them. Um, and so I did. I, I started this blog. Um, the name actually came from a friend in my, of mine and I were sitting at a faculty meeting because I was a teacher um, back then and we were just coming up with names and I wrote that one down and we both kind of laughed at it and we were like, that kind of fits like the my dorky vibe. Um, <laughs> and, and so I tried it and for probably like the first six months, my mom was probably my only reader. Um, and then Pinterest entered and literally overnight, I went from maybe getting like 10 or 12 hits a day to thousands. I woke up one day and was like, what happened? Um, so that's kind of how it started. Um, 
So I, I write about care packages. I also write about military life in general. I write about military discounts, um, long distance relationships, uh, deployment, pretty much just anything that encompasses, you know, military life. So when I first hit the scene, um, as far as, you know, having like a voice online as pertains to military, anything, your blog was like, one of the um, just thought oh, that means- I mean, I'm not <laughs> kidding. Like, and first of all, y- did you watch modern family? It was he, the guy yeah. used to say, no, my gosh, all the time. Like, <laughs> That's what I think of every time, like, oh my gosh. Um, so almost anytime I want to type, like, OMG, I'm like, OMG. <laughs> um, so kudos on the branding. That was top notch. <laughs> um, so yeah, Pinterest totally. And that's exactly where I would probably go to search for care package tips is Pinterest. Um, so, okay. So talk to me about, like, maybe what's your favorite care package or, or what is some... Yeah, where, where do I even start? Because, like, let me tell you what my care packages look like. Let's start there, actually. Let's diagnose. Okay. That. Okay. Um, deodorant. <laughs> some, um, maybe some beef jerky. I don't know. Uh, whatever has been requested, right? And then, like, the padding is usually the target bag that it all came in. And uh, maybe I'll throw some artwork that the kids drew just because I was throwing it away anyway. <laughs> I'll throw that in there <laughs> and seal it up. And then it takes me eight weeks to get to the post office. So that's where we're starting from. How can you help? Okay. Me? <laughs> okay. So I want to be really clear that like how you make a care package is great for you. Um, because I like no shaming yeah. or anything. Like I, I feel like so often we're, we're so into how things look, you know, like we want everything to be Instagram perfect and life is not Instagram perfect. Right. Um, right. So I think if you love intricate care packages and like, for me, it was really cathartic because I was able to be like, like cutting out tiny little hearts or whatever and pasting them everywhere. And I was, for me, that was important that like, John would get this care package. And it was something that I touched that he was touching. He could see how much like I loved him and was thinking about him as like my little piece of what I could do for him when he was gone. Um, But that's not important for everybody and it doesn't have to be. Um, towards the end of his deployment, um, I started sending all pretty much utilitarian things. Like at first they were really super cutesy with like little cute games and things. Um, and then I started realizing that almost all of that stuff, he, they were going to either throw away or burn, um, you know, cause they couldn't take it all back. And so like the environmentalist in me was like, oh my gosh, I've just been sending all these like little tchotchkes and all of that stuff. Um, So I think it's totally fine to send deodorant and to send beef jerky and to send kids pictures and all of that. Um, I think, you know, is it feeding you and is it feeding your loved one? And if they're happy and you're happy, then that's awesome. Um, You know, if you want to do themes and things like that, I think there is a place for that, too. If you are not crafty, but you want to be, there are a bunch of sellers on Etsy where you can buy pre-cut, pre-done care package kits um, that you can just glow on, like glue on the flaps. Um, Oh, that's a good idea. It's and and they're phenomenal, and many of them are military spouse-owned businesses. You know, Um, because like I have like a Cricut thing, and I'm terrible at using it. Um, you know, all of my stuff was like markers and scissors. And now that I look back on it, it's not that highly polished look that many people are after today. Um, but that's okay too, you know? I love it. So what are, um, what are some of your favorite themes? Did you do theme boxes? I bet you did. I did. Uh, yeah, I tried to fit everything around a theme. Some of them were awesomer than others. Um, <laughs> like I did an F words theme because I literally had, I just had all this stuff that I bought and I was like, oh, it's fruit. And it was uh, tuna fish, like tuna fish packets. And it was like all F theme things. So I sent him like an F words package. It was dorky. Oh <laughs> uh, I think my favorite thing was so, of course, I, I'm an over-researcher, so when I knew that John was leaving and we, we knew when he was flying out, um, we had gotten engaged about two weeks before his deployment out of this country. Wow. And I had read online that, like, you know, buffer, like, two to four weeks for things to get 
to your loved ones. So I was like, all right, I've got this. Like he will get a care package within like the first two weeks that he is uh, in Afghanistan. And so I made this care package and on the outside, I took Sharpies and it was so over the top. It's almost embarrassing now, but I wrote, we are getting married around the outside of the box, like really big letters. And then I colored it like, so like flamboyantly rainbow, right? Like it was a nightmare. John gets off the airplane <laughs> at Bagram and somebody says, are you John? No. And they, he's like, yes. And he had the care package and he's like, this has been sitting here for a week. So you're getting married, right? <laughs> like in front of everybody. Um, probably John wanted to just like crawl under the plane and disappear. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> yeah. And we found out luckily for us uh, because of where I was living, apparently the mail was super quick going to Afghanistan like he would get things within days sometimes um that was my favorite care package I did other Christmas countdowns and things like that too but that's my favorite story I love that you had an address even to send it like usually it's you know once they get there you gotta wait around to to send it yeah so one thing that I've noticed I'm like literally always kind of drowning like and, and Care packages, especially cute care packages, are not things that are, like, top on my list, right? If there's things that he needs that he forgot or whatever, like, okay, cool, I'll figure it out. Um, What would you say to maybe extended family members or friends who want to prepare care packages? Um, Mainly because people are always asking me, like, what should we send him? I'm like, I don't know, figure out, like, Google it (laughs) or I'll send them to you. But what would you advise for, like, yeah, family, friends, loved ones, sweet people that just want to send care packages? Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's a great question um, because a lot of times other people want to help too. Um, so I think know what he needs or what she needs and wants. Um, I know for John, like they were stocked up with USO stuff. Like mm-hmm. he didn't need a single Girl Scout cookie because they had boxes and boxes, but there were other things Um he particularly really wanted um, like energy bars and um, tuna fish in single serving packets, that kind of thing. Um, so I think the first part is if you're able to communicate with the person, ask them what they want and what they need. Um, I think it's also nice to ask uh, family members if they're not sure what to send, to send multiple things so that the service member can share it with friends and with coworkers too. Um, because they're just, there are some people who never get care packages. Um, and so I think that's a nice thing to do. Um, I'm a big proponent of sending videos or sending letters. Um, so like taking a USB drive, especially if the service member has, um, access to a computer or something to, to view a video on and, you know, videotape people saying hello. Um, one thing I did for John it just came up in a, in conversation the one day he said like he hadn't seen rain for like 200 days. Um, it hadn't rained a single day. And so we had a, a, a rainstorm and I just sat on the porch and videotaped the rain for like yeah. three minutes and sent it to him. That's awesome. um, so things like that. Yeah, um, that's really cool. Um, so, hey, I want to say hey to some people watching. Gosh, um, you guys, thanks for tuning in. Julie says, before smartphones, I remember re- that receiving music on CDs, like mixtapes, was appreciated. Um, you remember that? Remember mixtapes? <laughs> oh my gosh, mixtapes. Sitting, like, on the radio and, like, recording the songs coming on. <laughs> yeah. right, like, with your fingers yep. on that? Yep. Um, <laughs> Krista commented a little while ago, go Navy. Krista Curtis. Hey, Krista. Thanks for watching. I saw Allison a little bit ago. I see Nicole. Hey, Nicole. Um, let's see. Who else? Krista Heather Lynn. Thanks for watching, you guys. If y'all have questions uh, for Joanna, drop them in. You know what to do. Um, okay. That's so great. So, as much as I want to, like, pretend like I'm going to live up to... <laughs> The Joe, my gosh, care package standard, probably not going to happen. So we'll just pretend like we'll tell my husband this conversation never happened um, and he'll continue to receive the necessities. Also, I think you make a good point about like what they have available to them. Um, He's got a fully stocked commissary, BX, whatever, like, you know, like they've got, they can get all the things that they need. So it's not as, as desperate, but there are definitely times when folks are in need of provisions that they don't have. So communication, if you have that either ahead of time before they leave, even right. Wouldn't you say like, ask them yeah, before they go. 
Like, what do you guys expect to have available um, in stock? Um, oh, Allison says she totally sent her husband mixtapes and CDs. That, I oh, that. that. So <laughs> um, okay, I want to take a quick break. I promised to, uh, to give a shout out to our sponsor earlier in the episode. So I'm going to let you grab a sip of water for just a second. And we'll come right back. Um, so you guys, um, I wanted to give a little more explanation about Boldly and give a shout out here to anyone that's watching. If you are project manager, if you are a marketer, an executive or administrative assistant, uh, bookkeeper or paralegal, pay attention. I have some stuff for you. Um, so if you've ever thought about taking your career remote, you need to look into our partner at Boldly. Boldly offers 100% remote W-2 positions in all of the fields that we just talked about. So if you don't know what a W-2 position is, it means that you're hired as an employee with benefits like paid time off that you could use to move your stuff. <laughs> um, you work with amazing clients. Some of their clients include Apple, like telephone Apple, Google, Zendesk, Facebook, beautiful Facebook. And you can work for these clients uh, all from the comfort of your own home. So they also recruit military spouses specifically because they understand um, how you guys have the amazing skills that they want and need. And you need a job that can support the setup that you need to thrive. So their current leadership is also 75% military spouses. So you can see how we've kind of, we've gotten in there, right? <laughs> and we have advocates on the inside for us. Um, so you can check out more about them at boldly.com slash milso jobs. That's M-I-L-S-O hyphen jobs. Um, and tune in next week. We're going to have um, two of their team members, Audrey and Devin, chatting with us um, about themselves and about their lifestyle and how they've, you know, kind of embraced the uh, remote work military spouse gig and also answer any and all questions about their open positions. So if you have questions, are interested, you're going to definitely want to tune into that chat. In the meantime, let's get back to my sweet friend, Joanna. Hey. Nice little break. Now, huh? <laughs> um, okay, so I'm curious um, about basically your path. So, like, you you've done so much. First of all, you just seem like you're one of the most adaptable people that I've met. Right? Like, no matter what life or specifically military life throws at you, I feel like you've taken it and rolled with it um, in all sorts of aspects. So, you started with the blog. Um, your care package from your heart to try to help your service member feel loved and appreciated from, from very early on before you were even married. So that evolved into Pinterest sensation, into a blog, into um, sort of a cushion to help um, accelerate you guys into the next stage of your lives post-military. Can you tell us a little bit about kind of your journey through that process and um yeah just like because I, I was so inspired hearing this i would love for you to share with others sure um so i would say that it yes i've done a lot of things um i've also cried a lot like <laughs> so it, it it's not like i was just like oh this change cool i'm gonna do this um there's you know it was hard um when i realized that i was uh, falling in love with this Navy guy who I had known since college. Like John and I have known each other since we were 18. Um, and then I realized like that means that I have to leave my career. And for various reasons, I, uh, it didn't make sense to pursue licensing um, because we were going to PCS a couple times. And so, and yeah, anyway, uh, so it, that was hard because I love teaching. It was amazing and I miss it every day. So it's not like it was just, you know, I'm just this happy person going along. Um, but it has been so cool to be able to see how, um, how I was able to evolve my career um, because the military gave me a chance to, uh, to be a professional writer, which is something I always wanted to do, but never felt like I knew exactly how to do it or um, that I, I didn't give myself the permission to fail at it, you know? So um, Joe, my gosh, kind of, for me became a jumping off point. It almost became like a, a portfolio. Um, and so I freelanced for a while and I wrote for a bunch of different things, um, some military spouse businesses, some um, organizations. I've, I've had things published in military spouse magazine and, um, this magazine called Urbanite and Huffington Post, a bunch of different things. Um, I became an editor at Military One Click. Um, and then I transitioned to doing some um, 
doing communications work uh, for Blue Star families. And then I've landed at military.com doing social media. Um, and that has just been an amazing journey to be able to say, you know, I have these skills and here's how I can translate them in all of these different places. Um, and it's really as we were approaching John's transition, um, realizing that, you know, I mean, if there's one thing that is true for everybody who ever has military life, a military life journey, it's that it ends at some point, yep. you know? Yeah. Um, and so realizing that, you know, benefits and a salary from the military were quickly coming to an end. Um, it gave me a lot of like fulfillment to say like, I, I am able to be the bridge for our family. Um, as we go on. So, uh, you know, through, through Joe, my gosh, and through my full-time job with military.com, it kind of, we became, I became that bridge. Um, and so that's why we were, we were able to take a chance with our coffee shop. Um, and so, you know, it is great if you, um, you know, if, if you're able to find that thing and the, the skills that you can translate throughout military life, because I think a lot of us have experienced that, um, and it's, it's kind of a great way to launch yourself, I think. I think it really is. I think a lot of times, especially when I'm having a conversation around employment and with employers um, and, you know, corporate entities and business owners and whatnot about the importance of um, helping military spouses sustain careers, not just jobs, right? Actual careers. Um you're, you're helping everyone in the family, like the talker, there's all this conversation around transitioning service members and making sure that they have all the resources that they, and there's a million nonprofits and organizations helping them transition properly. But what the stat is like something like most, I don't know what it's, it's more than half leave their first job after the first year. Um, right. Or something like that. But wouldn't it be great if they had a minute to just catch their breath and reacclimate what is being a civilian mean? What does that look like? Um, because we had the opportunity to support them for a change, you know? So I just, I think it's huge that um, this conversation has come to light. I think it's amazing that you have kind of paved your own way and that and opened up the opportunity for your service member spouse to explore some things and pursue a passion instead of feeling like wretched or like stuck to, oh, I got to get out and go contract or whatever and hate that. And it's the same thing. It's just different uniform or, you know, whatever. so it's inspiration. It's also another reason to don't, not give up your dream of employment if you're a military spouse. Seek out those connections. Mm -hmm. Be willing to fail. Yeah, I agree. That's huge. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> okay, so we had um, <laughs> we had a question. I'm going to go back just because it's a great question okay. um, that could get kind of funny. <laughs> Let me pull it up. So Julie, asked, is it going to make me blush? <laughs> depends on your answer. <laughs> Um, Julie asked, um, oh no, that's the wrong, let's see, Krista, sorry, Krista asked, what are some lesser known no-no items to make sure we don't send? <laughs> so, <laughs> I would say, um, don't send fragrant items with food. Like mm. you, you don't normally think about that, but like, if you're going to send like, um, like a scented candle or something like that don't send them next to, you know, homemade cookies because then everything is going to taste like whatever the candle smells like. Um, so I think that that's, that's a pretty big no, no. Um, and I think too, so I will be real honest. I'm super straight laced. Um, and so like I never sent John alcohol or anything that was like on like the do not send list uh, because it would be my luck that something ridiculous would happen and he would get in trouble. <laughs> when you're putting rainbow flags and big bold letters and hearts all over your packages, you're kind of putting a big like signal on it too. So you're yeah. calling attention. Well, that was the only one that was ridiculous on. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like I just, I always, I'm always that person. Like I'm always the person who gets pulled out of line at TSA or anything like yeah, okay. that. <laughs> so, um, so I, I mean, for me, I'm, I would just say, don't if it if you're told not to send it, don't send it and don't try to be cutesy about sneaking it in. Like, yeah. you know, that's, that's, 
just my very square <laughs> thought I get everybody in trouble. That's funny. The scent, it, this, the fragrance is good. Because yeah, in my mind, I was like, oh, it'd be so nice if it smelled like, you know, your perfume or whatever. But you're so right. You don't want to mix food in with any of that. And making sure stuff is, like, sealed. Those were some of the tips that I loved. Like, how to, like, pack cookies so they don't go bad. And don't you stick a piece of bread in there or something? Like, is that, am I wrong? I, I've never done that. I vacuum seal. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay. And, and I found a lot of success with that. I mean, some of it, John said, like a couple of the cookies would be like totally smashed, but he didn't care. He just like threw them in a bowl and ate them with a spoon. You know, um, yeah, but they, they seemed to be fresh and didn't get gross. So Krista wanted to clarify that she didn't mean anything eyebrow raising. I was trying to push you into a direction that you didn't want to go in. So, okay, we'll leave it for next time. <laughs> you guys are all immune. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, cool. So let's talk just a smidge about um, Carla Barracks. And then tell me again the name of the big AGR base that you are located near. Um, and then maybe hit some high points of if someone's headed there, what should they know? Sure. Um, so I live pretty close to uh, Fort Indian Town Gap, which is a National Guard training base here in Pennsylvania. It's the largest in the state, and I believe it's the second largest in the country. So it's it's fairly big, and we have a lot of training going on all the time. Um, I think, you know, if you're coming to the central Pennsylvania area, um, first of all, I am from central Pennsylvania, so I love it. It's really nice. Like, I love the four seasons. Um, I love snow. I also love a nice summer. Um, we don't have a whole lot of traffic. Like that was one of the biggest things when we moved back here after living in Virginia beach and then living in DC or close to DC. Uh, it just, there's, there's not a lot of traffic like that. So that's really, really nice. Don't you guys have buggies though? Do you have like horse and buggies and tractors? <laughs> we do. My parents' name is Amish. Yep. <laughs> so it's a different kind of traffic. <laughs> Yeah, you can get stuck behind a tractor and be <laughs> stacked up, but um, I think my blood pressure has decreased by a lot. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, um, I think, you know, some of the things to, to keep in mind, um, just if you move into this area, we're very, like, it feels rural, but we're close to a lot of things, you know, um, we're close to probably within two hours of Philly, within three hours of D.C., within three hours of New York City. Um, if you want to go to New England, it's pretty easy. Three and a half hours to, uh, to Pittsburgh. Um, the beaches are pretty close by, you know, if you want to go to the Jersey Shore, if you want to go to Maryland beaches. Um, so there is a lot of stuff to do um, and a lot of things to explore. There's a lot of history in the area. Um, you know, Harrisburg is a beautiful capital. Um, to if you like history and architecture, um, Lancaster City is an up and coming city that has a ton of really good, great places to eat. There's just there's a whole lot. And if you just like rural America, it's just a beautiful place to live, too. That's awesome. I've never been to Pennsylvania. So I'll have to come, come on up. And get coffee. Now you know, yeah. I'll have to come <laughs> stop by and grab me some yummy coffee. <laughs> I forgot about Hershey, too. We've got Hershey parts. <laughs> Okay, so it's a theme park, yeah? Or yeah. Okay, I'm thinking Coca-Cola World, but no, it's like a whole, like, Six Flags kind of park with roller yeah, coasters. Yeah, I mean, there's roller coasters, there's water rides, but they also have this thing called Chocolate World, where it's like a ride through about how they make chocolate, and at the end, you get chocolate for free. So oh, it's fun. I bet they do <laughs> military discounts, too. You know, I can't speak to that. I think they do. <laughs> Fact check, Jen, fact check for us. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So I always ask about hidden gems in your area. So I know one, so watch your coffee. We'll drop that link too. But what are some other things that people head to your area and um, maybe isn't like, didn't make the big shiny touristy, to, you know, flyer and they might've missed, but then um, takes a minute to discover and you want people to know about like from day one. Sure. Um, so if you are coming to Fort Indian Town Gap, um, we are very close to the Appalachian Trail, extremely close. Oh, wow. Um, so, yeah. So I think that that is a lot of fun. Um, we have some very, uh, canoeable and kayakable, um, streams in this area. Um, so that is fun. We have a great, um, state park called Swatera State Park, um, that has some historical, 
things that you can go and climb around as well as a lot of uh, fun natural things and hiking trails, bike trails. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, those, those are the things I would definitely point out right away. Fort Indian Town Gap actually has a butterfly sanctuary on the base. Wow. Um, and I've never, believe it or not, I've never done it. I want to do it this spring or summer. Um, but you can go during a certain time and walk through. And apparently it's just like hundreds of, of thousands of butterflies. Um, so I think that that's, you know, that's something fun to do, too. That's incredible. I don't know if I've ever. I have been in one of the Smithsonian's, but it's like a little tiny little like walk through thing. I've never been to like a big, huge, that's cool. Neat. Um, okay. So my next question is tell me something you wish you had known. Um, I usually kind of dot, dot, dot trail that off and let people fill it in. But I kind of want to point that to you as a, a kind of someone who's kind of out the other end of the military service cycle um what is something that you wish you had known maybe right then when you were getting engaged and sending your first care package um as a young soon-to-be spouse Hmm, that's a great question um i think i would probably i wish i would have known um that the changes in military life are not the end of the world. Like for the most part, even if you have to divert, divert from like a a career path or something um, that you want to do, there's a lot of other opportunities that open up to them, uh, to to you. Um, We had the chance to live in Fredericksburg, Virginia uh, for three years, which was phenomenal. And just that alone, like we, you know, it was just, it was just a wonderful opportunity and something that at the beginning, I think I would have been, I was scared of and uh, being able to just honestly not even have the choice to say yes, just to have to do it um, was a little liberating, honestly. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, that's great. And staying open, and, yeah. right. To opportunity yeah. is huge. Like, cause a lot of times I think we get, I know I personally have dealt with this where there's a change. There's a, there's something that happens that disrupts what I am comfortable with. And the, the inclination is to like shut down and be like, oh, you know, be resentful and whatever, but to stay open to, okay, well, I've got to figure out a way through this and a way to grow in the midst of it is huge. Um, and that is totally me. Like, again, lots of tears, <laughs> lots of being upset. It's not just that I was like, Oh, this was a great opportunity. I was like, Oh, we have to do this or that or, you know, whatever. And, but looking back, I'm, I'm really glad we did. Yeah. No, no. So I used to say, like, you know, my story, when people would ask me, like, you're, what's your story? I'm like, oh, well, you know, I met this boy in Charleston, and somehow he convinced me to move to Fayetteville, North Carolina. And I used to say, like, I came up here kicking and screaming. I didn't want to do it. Um, it's not, like, my favorite place. Like, I can't imagine living anywhere else. So, yeah, it just it just takes a moment. You got to have your pussy fit, get over it, and then move on. <laughs> awesome. Okay, Joanna. Tell me or tell us where all we can find you online. Sure. So you can find me at joemygosh.com. Um, and if you want to check out our uh, our coffee shop, it's Swatera, S-W-A-T-A-R-A, coffee.com. I've been saying that they were wrong this whole time. Swatera. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate your time and your willingness to, to share your wisdom and your insights with us. Um, yeah, you're amazing. Keep it up. I'll see you again soon. Thank you. I'm so thrilled. Thanks for having me, Kelly. Hi, Joanna. <laughs> Okay, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that chat. Um, I know we kind of covered a lot of bases, but I wanted to maximize the time that we had with her and to be able to um, kind of get her advice and expertise on all sorts of areas. Um, so be sure to check her out online. Joe, my gosh, it's an inspiring, amazing place to be, you know, to follow and kind of stay clued into all things military life. Um, and be sure to join us next week. We will be chatting with the Boldly team members. Thanks once again to their sponsorship and making these chats possible for um, this pre-PCS season where we're all kind of getting a little amped up and ready, ready to either know where we're going or ready to get there or whatever it is that you're dealing with. Uh, be sure to check out Millie, gomillie.com for all of our resources to be able to help uh, ease your transition in some way and support uh, better and smarter decisions along the way. Okay, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you again next week. <laughs>